Six months ago, I was sworn in as an unusual mayor of Boston. There's not much around that's older than Harvard, but Boston is. Founded in 1630, and until six months ago, we had never, in nearly 400 years, elected a woman or a person of color as mayor. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. If you've ever heard the term woke mind virus and wondered what that refers to, I have an embolism inducing example that you must see to believe. And we'll get right to that after you give me 30 seconds to explain why gold and precious metals are a must in these troubled economic times and also how to get a free coin while you're at it. Geopolitical tensions are escalating. Inflation is raging, despite what they say. Stocks are sinking. Debt is rising. And your own financial future isn't looking clever. Yet gold endures every crisis. Wars, disasters, no calamity has ever beaten gold. While paper assets crash and burn, gold endures every time. You need to take a fresh look at gold steadying your portfolio. And right now, get a free three ounce silver American virtue coin when you open an IRA with Noble Gold Investments today. Shield your savings with Noble Gold Investments. Go to noblegoldinvestments.com right now. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. The only gold company I trust. And remember, there's always risk of investment and there are no guarantees of any kind. In my experience, one of the most prominent traits of the so-called woke is their deep burning hatred for the whites. What I did wrong in 2016 is I overestimated white people. The biggest terror threat in this country is white men. That, that white folks actually care about ra racial injustice. It doesn't appear that we do. I mean, the status quo of our society is racism. Because we're white, we have, we have had privilege, even the poorest of us. I think that white people are committed to being villains. The thing I want to say to you is we got to take these motherfuckers out. But I know, but like, we can't say that, right? The idea that white people are objective on racism, which is outrageous. We are the least objective. The heartbeat of racism itself is denial and the sound of that heartbeat is, I'm not racist. <laughs> this is exactly why they redefined racism and claim that it's impossible to be racist to white people. So they can be anti-racist while outwardly displaying open hatred for white people. Oh, that's brilliant. These sorts of contradictions are the bedrock of so-called wokeness, which is really just the result of people indoctrinated with critical race theory derived ideologies like DEI. And that's exactly how you get people like this woke supremacist Boston mayor, Michelle Wu. You might remember her from the time she did a live stream about her vaccine mandates and it didn't go as she had planned. <laughs> As reported by the Boston Herald in regards to the Boston mayor, Michelle Wu, a Wu administration official on behalf of the mayor mistakenly sent out all Boston city councilors an email Tuesday inviting them to a holiday party that was meant exclusively for, quote, electeds of color, prompting an apology and mixed reactions. <laughs> Electeds of color? Am I the only one that thinks coloreds when I read that? Oh, that's that's weird, man. That's weird. What the hell is this? A mayor whose job it is to look over all citizens of her city, no matter what skin color they are, is specifically excluding whites. And I love how they claim it was mistakenly done, as if they accidentally had a racist party. It seems that the mistake here that they're talking about was sending the invite out to those dastardly whites. Okay, so let's go through this apology. But let me warn you, you're going to want to sit down for this one. Quote, I wanted to apologize for my previous email regarding a holiday party for tomorrow. I did send that to everyone by accident, and I apologize if my email may have offended or came across as so. Sorry for any confusion this may have caused. Now I feel better. All she does is admit that they accidentally sent it out to some white people who weren't invited. And if they're offended, well, well, fuck you. Wow. I mean, isn't this highly illegal? And doesn't it open the city up to many racial discrimination lawsuits? I assume that white taxpayer dollars are helping to pay for this party that excludes them because of their skin color. Beyond that, does Michelle Wu or her clan understand what they did was morally wrong and repugnant? No, you idiot. Remember, 
these people are woke and believe that they can't be racist to white people. And we don't even have to speculate about that because they openly stated it when the city council came to her defense and said that, quote, there's no need for an apology at all. In an email, Dos Santos and her colleagues, Councilor Tania Fernandez Anderson, who describes herself as an African immigrant and Muslim American woman, was more candid, saying that there's no need for apologies at all. Email should not offend anyone, and there's absolutely no confusion. Just like there are groups that meet based on shared interests or cultural backgrounds, it's completely natural for elected officials of color to gather for holiday celebration. Let's just switch some words around here real quick and see how it sounds. Just like there are groups that meet based on shared interests or cultural backgrounds, it's completely natural for white elected officials to gather for a holiday celebration. Oh, that was different. I'm sure I don't have to tell you about Claudia Gay, who both thinks that there's a context when calling for genocide against the Jews and that people who misgender should be punished. She also plagiarized her dissertation and yet is still being defended by the university and the media. In fact, they knew about her plagiarizing and covered it up. Like I'm known for pointing out, the left operate on their own constantly shifting standards, which is why it's always different when they do it. It probably won't surprise you that among those who defended Claudia Gay, what's Michelle? Michelle Wu. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Folks, this extremist racist movement isn't going to stop. And as we can see from these most recent incidents, they will be supported by our institutions. The institutions are literally creating these people and then putting them into positions of power. This is all being done on purpose. We better start standing up for ourselves or it'll be our kids and grandkids who suffer the most. All right, folks, that's all I have for that. I hope you enjoyed it. If you lasted this long, you might as well hit that like button. And I'll see you all on the next one.